was things the, just went downhill with management at U.S. Express on the the Costco account. Somebody, a new manager, come in and messed everything up and was cutting my miles and giving the new people my miles and. Yeah, I, you I know, just I, felt my career was going down the drain, and instead of advancing, it was, you know, falling. So I was looking for something better. And all right, so you know, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. About a nasty, <laughs> gross trainer. This girl did not take a bath for a week. All right, Amber in the building. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yep. All right. So thank you very much for uh, chopping it up with me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, listen, take the time a little bit to, um, to, uh, introduce yourself and I guess how long you've been trucking. Okay. I've been in trucking, um, about two years. I come from a long line of truck drivers. My dad has been driving for 38 years. He's an owner operator now. Um, my uncles were all truck drivers and my grandfather, my dad's dad, was a truck driver as well. So Man, like back in the old crazy looking, crazy looking uh, cab over things they were driving back then. Okay, <laughs> so you go back generations. So you you from a you from a family of truckers. So it was inevitable for you to get into it. Well, you know, I I brought myself a long way in life. I started off, you know, 18, 19 years old battling crippling depression and bipolar disorder. Um, I was on disability for 12 years, uh, fell and broke my ankle and was in a wheelchair for a year. This was four years ago, three years ago. Okay. And I was in that wheelchair and I was pitying myself, pitying myself. And finally I said, you know what? This ain't going to be the rest of my life. I know I can drive a truck. It's in my blood. I'm going to do it. And my mom's side of the family all, you know, hated the idea, but I did it. All I struggled right. at first with my ankle being messed up, but I fought through it. And now I'm a pretty good truck driver. Now, I'm not, not, not the best. I'm learning every day, but I've been driving about two years now. So still got a long way to go. I have dreams of being the owner operator myself. So, okay. That's what's up, man. So let's get into it. So you, uh, you, you came to the she trucking trucking group. And uh, unfortunately, you had a little a little misstep, a uh, little misstep. Um, yeah. What what actually what actually happened? Because it looks as though that you was already working for a company, but uh -huh. you 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 left a company. You took their drug tests. You did you take their drug tests and found out that you was positive? Or you went back to yeah. your original company? It's no, I look. I thought the grass was greener over at J.R. Shugel from U.S. Express. Oh, it's not. Oh, so I'm on, giving up a hold dedicated. On, hold up! Hold up! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! You you just mentioned, I can't be name uh, dropping, right? No, no, no. You you just mentioned two automotors of mine. I started off at U.S. Express, and I actually was the one that put J.R. Shrugel on the map as far as social media goes. Heck, yeah. So, yeah. So, okay, so I, I tell you what. I, I, I tell you what. Um, you, you was at U.S. Express at first, though, right? Yeah, I was on a Southeast Regional account, and uh, you sent some all, and I was top female on the account. No, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I run. Okay. Yeah, I told them, you put the miles on me, I'll run them. And they tested me, and I proved them right. Okay, so what What was Things the, just went downhill with management at U.S. Express on the, the Costco account. Somebody, a new manager, come in and messed everything up and was cutting my miles and giving the new people my miles and... Yeah, I, you I know, just I, felt my career was going down the drain, and instead of advancing, it was, you know, falling. So I was looking for something better. And all right, so you know, I went. So with U.S. Express, I, I kind of, I kind of feel where you're coming from with U.S. Express. I mean, you know, you, it, it, it feels like how I feel that I put the time in. I, I did what I was supposed to do. I, I 
became top mm-hmm. of, you know, the top tier. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I was I was a victim of a one and done situation. So but exactly. With, but would you they opened the account back up mm-hmm. and everything went. They started giving the, the new drivers all the miles and they were screwing up. And I'm like, why? Are, I mean, give them miles. Yeah, because you promised them miles when the recruiter told them. But don't give them my miles. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> you so, know the stuff's going to be on time when I take it. So instead of, so who who reached out to who first uh, when it came to J&R Shrugal? Well, I reached out to them. I saw one of probably your ads on on Facebook mm-hmm. and um, got in touch with the recruiter and all sounded wonderful. Um, went to orientation. And like I told you before, I had you know, three surgeries on my ankle. But look, I've been driving almost two years. It hadn't been a problem yet. You know, if I have to get in and out of that trailer, I figure out a way. Mm-hmm. I don't like to, but I can do it. It's not a safety issue. I have never had an issue with my ankle, but I mentioned it to them, you know, just because that was the right thing to do, I thought. Right. So they refused to hire me because they said that was a safety risk. So they send me home. What? And uh, then two days later, yeah. Oh my God! I'm okay. Give Give me a second to get my thought together. Hold on, right quick. Hold on. All right. So, okay. So you 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 talked to a recruiter at J and R Schwugel. They got you in, or of course they they approved you to come in to you know to go to orientation. You was at or right. you was at orientation. Where where were you at orientation? Was you in Ohio and or in Minnesota? I was in Forest Park. For- at their little uh Forest Park, Georgia. Oh, you was at the uh super you was at the super service uh terminal. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the the big terminal, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you're da- all right. So you you down there. You're at the orientation, and while you was at orientation, that's when they tell you that no, nah, we can't use you because of your ankle. Okay, this is how this went down, right? Um, get to class. You know, they sent us our forms to fill out like two days before we go to class. I had all my stuff filled out. Everybody else in the class. Hadn't even started there. So I'm sitting there chilling, chilling, chilling. He's telling me everything we're going to do. So I sign all this paperwork. And then he's like, okay, we got to interview with safety before we can go for the road test and the backing. I'm like, okay. Um, I've never really, I guess I've met with safety before at different companies. I don't really remember, but it was never an issue. And I told them all about my ankle, you know, just. So they're aware if anything happens, you know, I'm not going to sue them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm letting you know up front. Hey, my ankle's messed up, so I'm not going to try to pull workers comp on you. Okay. But I I get myself in trouble sometimes trying to be an honest person. So he was like, okay, well, um, everything's good. Your MVR is good. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I, I think you're too much of a safety risk with your ankle because wow. we do crawl in and out of trailers a lot. And I'm like, I can crawl in and out of a trailer. I don't like to. That's why I asked that we get in and out of them a lot. But I make do. Like, I have to booty scoot off the side of the trailer when I get out. <laughs> wow. So he- I'm very short. So it's hard, but I make do. So let me get the. Let, let me see if I can wrap my head around this right here, okay? Let, let me see if yeah. I can. And, and, and listen, guys, no no disrespect to my big drivers out there. Hey, I'm I'm not coming for you guys, but listen, this, this young lady right here explained to them that, you know, her, her she had issues with her ankle, but it's okay now. And you see how companies... Uh, what's what's the right word that I'm looking for? Discriminate against this young lady and making it a safety issue, but yet I see big guys that's weighing in the in the stratosphere. Y'all y'all driving y'all driving out here y'all and y'all don't present a safety 
issue. I mean, y'all got to get in and out of the trailer. I mean, trailer every day. Don't get me wrong. I'm a yeah. big. I'm a big guy too. I'm you know I'm I'm touching about two forty five right now. But I've seen a lot of you drivers out there that's touching like three four. You know, and I, mm-hmm. I I I don't understand the double standard. But wow. So he said um he said that to you, huh? So. After six- yeah, and he just basically dismissed me, and I really felt discriminated against. Like, I really did. I've never felt that discriminated against in my life. And I come through a lot in trucking about discrimination and stuff because I'm a female. But that really upset me. Wow. So, after the conversation, uh, he just gave you a bus ticket home then. No, I drove my, I drove home. I drove up there because I live in Carrollton, Georgia. So it wasn't but about an hour drive. So I drove home, you know, cried a little bit because I done left U.S. Express and just knew I was going to have this job within a few days. Well, then I get back to my hotel room and the medical uh, MRO calls. Okay. And that's when the bottom fell out. Okay. So... The medical examiner called you. They, they, they look now, when I went to JNR school, they only did the, the urine. So now they do right. u- they now they do urine and hair follicles now? No, no, they didn't do a hair follicle. This was a urine test. I forgot that I had even done anything because it was a one-time mistake. I was on my home time. Didn't even think twice about it. It had been like two weeks. It was still in my system. Oh, and it wasn't God. no green either. I'm so embarrassed. And I know I'm going to get hated on, but, you know, I might have hit some mess. Oh, and I just completely forgot about it because it was literally a one-time mistake, a weak moment. I knew better, but I'll never jeopardize my career for that crap again. Oh, driver. I've come too far in life. Driver. I know. I believe me. I have beat myself down more than anybody else could ever beat me down. Okay. So, so was it? So was it weed or what? What was it that that that? No, uh, that it was sh- meth. Meth. Oh, yeah. Driver. Stupid. Like stupid, and it should have been out of my system. But that's not the point. Stupid me shouldn't have done it. And like. When I tell you my depression got real bad real quick, like it got dark. Like, okay. Like, it still gets dark when I think about it. So now. Like, you, why so, did I jeopardize the rest of my life and my gold yeah, ticket in my pocket exactly. for something stupid? Well, let me ask you now. Now, let me ask you this. Um, let me ask you this. Yeah. Amber. Uh, when they called you and they, you know, they said that you test po- uh, that you test positive, uh, did uh, did they 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 put it on your FMCSA clearinghouse then, right? Yeah, they they put me on um uh what they call it uh non safety. I could only do non safety sensitive jobs, so I wasn't allowed to operate. An 18 wheeler until I went through the SAP program, which I successfully have completed. Come Tuesday, it'll be closed out. Okay. But that's going to haunt me for the next seven years. That's going to, you okay. know, okay. stuff. All right. So, okay. So you completed the, you, you completed the SAP program. Um, yeah, would... the recommendation was five sessions with a counselor. And it really helped a lot. I got my head back on straight because, like I said, I went to a dark place. Like when I screwed myself up like that. When, when, when you went through the SAP program, uh, how how was the how was the process for you? Uh, pay five hundred dollars to some dude to make do a psych evaluation. Basically, it's a drug and alcohol evaluation, but they get in your head real good and and make a make a determination on um, what he recommends you do before. He'll close it out, and you have to complete it. And, um, you know, the counselor or whoever he sent you to, he could have put me in rehab for six months if he thought it was something that was going to be a problem. But he gave me five sessions with the counselor, Mm -hmm. and I completed that. And my counselor said, you know, you've done good. You've struggled, but 
I said, I'm not going to let this define me. I said, I've come too far to earn it now. I said, this will not define me. I will come back up. All right, all right, and I'm glad. I'm 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 glad that was uh that 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 you took the initiative. I'm glad that you got yourself clean, and I'm I'm definitely glad that you realize how important it is to you know keep your uh CDL clean because your as you yes. said your CDL is your is, is your golden ticket. Now now mm-hmm. it's all about now it's all about. Getting back with a company, which uh, which I see the struggle that's 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 forthcoming for you. Um, yeah, I'm course, in like four or five groups trying to get help. Of course, um, you are you able to are you able to get back with US Express? Did they hire Sap? Because I did leave on good terms. I mean, Ricky was a little upset with me, but Alex called and told me, you know, it was a pleasure to work with me if I ever wanted to come back to my job, you know, give him a call. But, you know, I don't know if they'll hire me because I'm Sap now. Well, I mean, did you, did, did you by chance reach out to him to, you know, to talk about it? I mean, no, because I'm embarrassed. Cause I know those folks over there and I'm so embarrassed. Well, it's 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 not gonna. I mean, you was at a moment of weakness, so I mean, some. I mean, right. it's, it's understandable. You know, maybe maybe if you reach out to him and you know, probably explain what happened a little bit, but uh, you yeah. know, to see if you know, to see if they'll 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 bring you back. I I personally don't know. Um. Some companies that I have I know called. there was a guy mm-hmm. um when I went through orientation that was sap, but I don't know how old his sap was. He was young, so it couldn't have been that old. Yeah, now some companies that I call, they they want you to be clear of the sap for at least five years. For like uh, three to five years is what I've run into so far. Okay. Um, I'm talking to a little trucking company in Alabama that, you know, really liked me before all this happened and was going to hire me. And it's really, um, convenient to my house, but mm-hmm. like, is it, I got to run it through safety, but you know, the recruiter's kind of on my side. He, he really wants me to get the job. So he's going to stand up for me to safety as much as he can, you know, but rules are rules. Mm-hmm. But I told him it wouldn't hurt to try because I mean, even the, the manager and everything up there from the trucking company called me and wanted to hire me. And I couldn't admit to him I done failed a drug test and couldn't right. couldn't talk to him no more. Uh well but I, I finally I can suggest I'm not sure if you got in contact with her, but her name is Miss Jerry from Life on the Road Recruiting. She deals <laughs> with a lot of uh, uh, sap. She clients. started she trucking, right? Uh, no, she she's she the, started she truck. She's the vice pre. She's the vice president of she trucking. So yeah. Jer- okay, yeah. Somebody sent me her name. Yeah, Miss Jerry. She will be. She will be a definite uh uh contact for you. She helps a lot of drivers that been through uh that been through sap uh get you know get employed. At least get you on your feet. I mean, the places that you're going to get right. employed, that that's going to give you a chance, is not going to be all that great. I'm here to tell you, you're not. Right. Going, you're not going to get, get that, it. I know. Right, you're not going to get that top tier. You know, despite that, if you've been driving for two, three years and all like that, the 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 sap really brace your opportunity Just restarts you right. on everything yeah yeah it really brace your opportunity the from- ones i've run across like the mega carriers or whatever and the, some of the smaller companies like they don't want to take you when you're just now closing it out like that kind of freaks them out because they're like can we take a chance on her like and they, a lot of them don't want to do the drug test that you got to do over the next six months either right it so, breaks it breaks from uh from maybe 10 oh and now, to like two yeah so. I, I got offered buddy more truck and offered me 45 cents a mile mm-hmm. and like but it's regional so i mean i'm leaning towards that more and more if this other stuff don't come through but i'm gonna give everything a chance to come through Cause I'm gonna go back on the road the first of the year. Something's gonna come through by the first of the year. I believe that. All right, God's all right. got me. 
All right. Well, keep your definitely keep your head up, Amber. Uh, Amber, right? Try. Amber. Amber. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Definitely keep your head up, Amber. And and thank you very much for having this sit down with me. I really I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed the conversation. Again, man, just uh, like I said, you know, I I, I I'm I'm with you. Again, I'm I, I am a strong uh proponent of 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 people getting into the industry clean. But if you like you mm-hmm. said, you had your moment of weakness, but you knew you knew your I learned. Yeah, there you go. You learn you live and you learn and you build from it. Mm-hmm. You definitely, right. definitely build from it. I don't know. I hope I don't fall. <laughs> All right, so of course, uh, Jay and R. Shrugal, <laughs> we can move them to the side. Uh, <laughs> we, you, you mentioned CRST. Do do you want to? Do, do you want? Oh wanna, man, do, you you want to tap on that for a little? Yeah, oh little, yeah, little bit. I can. You you done got me wound up now. I'll go into oh, it. Okay, okay. So, was CRST before or I'm I'm going to assume it was before US Express. Yeah, I was with the trainer. It was like the third trainer I done been with, right? Three trainers. Okay. I couldn't learn to back up. Yeah, like well, I'm not made to be in a truck with another person. I'll just tell you that. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't my attitude. It was them giving me attitude. But like they grabbed the steering wheel and tried to turn it and show me how. To, I'm like, y'all, you're not teaching me how to back up. Like you're not helping me. So they get mad and put me off the truck. Well, I finally ended up at CRST. And uh, they put me on trainer with this big old girl, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Right, I ain't skinny. Right, I so can't hold, judge. Hold, hold up, let's let's uh, let's let's go back. Let's not go back to the very beginning, but let's go back a little bit. All right. So, was CRST was 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 the place where you got your CDLs? No, I got my CDLs at a, a technical school. I got a grant that paid for it, which I recommend highly to anybody that wants to get a CDL. Go to your community college, and your most states offer a grant that'll pay for almost a hundred percent of your tuition. All right, so CRST was the first uh, company that you chose after you got your CDLs. No, they were like the third company I ended up after I got my CDLs because. Like I said, I'm not meant to be in the truck with another person, and they weren't really helping me. I wasn't learning how to back up, and they were getting mad, and I was getting mad. So right. I never actually officially graduated. So, so, so with CRST, how, how long was you with them? You you already said you was you you was already through three uh, trainers, but how long you was with them all together yeah. before? Before you, I was you just with said CRST. That it wasn't... Mm-hmm. I was with them about a month and a half, you know, after the big incident, and then they sent me to recover trucks and stuff. And uh, the last time they wanted me to blindside at that yard in in Atlanta, uh, I dropped that trailer <laughs> in the middle of the damn Caterpillar yard, All and right. I drove the truck to the terminal. <laughs> And you just and dropped it. You just said, "Forget it." So, what was your what was your experience? I, what was your experience with the well, with the last trainer? Because you said that's where that's where the big blow up was at. Yeah, man. Like this lady, you know, first thing comes out of her mouth. Oh, I used to be a needle donkey. Blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm in recovery too. That's great. We'll get along. Well, this girl don't take a bath. It was like rocked on over a week. I'm taking a bath, you know, every night, but she's going to act like she ain't got time to take a bath. Girl, you stink. And I finally told her she stunk, so it was downhill from there. But the final blow up was I got up one morning, and she was having the worst attitude. She was acting crazy. And I finally snapped at her, and she going to accuse me of being on drugs. And... I'm like, hold up. I'm not the one acting crazy. I said, call the company. I'll go take a test right now. So she calls them acting all crazy and just throwing my stuff out of the truck. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm at the Flying J in Waco, Texas. That ain't the place for a female to be put out at. So she's throwing my stuff out of the truck. 
And uh, I'm trying to get it before she can grab it and put it out without tearing stuff up. Well, anyway, get out of the truck. She grabs the blower thing and blows dirt in my face and says, here, take that with you too, bitch. Wow. And she had lost another trainee previous to me and uh, the quit on her. Supposedly, I think she probably threw her off to or run her off. But what? when I finally talked to the fleet manager, uh, well, I had to call the company myself. Yeah. All right. So Waco, Texas, Flying J, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're sitting wondering. Sitting on the curb. Wondering, you know, wondering what in the hell next. is about to happen. So you mm-hmm. you get on the phone with your your fleet manager to let them know what happened. What was the conversation? It was night night dispatch. It was night dispatch. Wow. I'm like, look. I said, I, I, it was like, I know she just told you a bunch of crazy stuff. I said, I'll gladly take a drug test for y'all. Like, just get me up out of this whole this, this truck stop parking lot. I said, I'm scared. There's crack kids everywhere. Like, this is dangerous. Did they, were, like, were, they were they were they able to get you you know settled in a hotel or whatever? Well, I'm I'm getting to that. Like I called the Uber and literally we had to go to ten different hotels because they were either booked or they don't take people till four o'clock in the afternoon or they cost three hundred dollars. So I didn't end up in the you know the Hyatt or anything, but I it was a high priced hotel because that was all that would take me. At, four or five o'clock in the morning on a Friday morning and uh, got they sent the money to the card to pay for the room. Cool, cool. Well, my fleet manager's off till Monday. So can't nobody authorize me a rental car till Monday. I'm stuck at whatever hotel this was till Monday morning and they got me a rental car back to Georgia and Darcy was like, I am so sorry. She said, I thought there was a problem with her when she lost the last trainee. I said, well, she needs to be fired or not be a trainer no more. I said, because she abused me. All right. So at least, so you, you was in work, you was in Waco, Texas for, for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, Monday, they got you the car and you was able to drive Mm -hmm. back, back to Georgia. Yeah. I thought I was done. I thought they were firing me at this point. So did they? But I went home, took so, the rental car, and went home. So did they? Well, so Monday rolls around. Your actual fleet manager is in the seat. What was mm-hmm. what was the conversation between you and him? What, what what was rectified? Was you able to? Me and her, like she was so sorry, like she couldn't believe it happened. But like I said, she said she had her concerns because she had had complaints from the last trainee. I said, well, why didn't you look into it more instead of sticking some other helpless person with them? Like, seriously, some people don't need to be trainers, and this girl was off the chain. But anyway, she said, go home, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go home, and they're going to fire me because of whatever this girl said to them, which they knew wasn't true because they never called me in for a drug test. So, all right. So, got back to my house uh, Tuesday. Darcy calls and says, Hey, you want to go pick up a truck for me in Miami? I'm like, Oh, okay. You're not firing me. She said, No. She said, I'm going to run you solo, even though you didn't graduate off the truck. She said, You know, when you were still on good terms, she was talking about how good you're doing. So, I think you can run solo. Okay. So, that's what I did for another two weeks. So for the COVID okay. truck, I got to tell about the COVID truck. Okay, go ahead. Oh my God! So I get down there, and this truck is nasty. I'm like, well, I saw and everything as I'm getting in, and uh, so for some reason, I'm going through the Qualcomm to see the messages. <laughs> this dude done almost died in the truck from COVID, and he abandoned it because he had to go to the hospital. <laughs> I'm like, y'all sent me after a COVID truck. Like, you could have warned me. And Darcy's like, well, it was on another account. I didn't know where I would told you. I'm like, what in the world? But that was about a nightmare. It's $500 to get the truck out of the uh, 595 down there in Miami. And <laughs> trying to turn around with the truck and trailer uh, in that little bitty spot because they won't let you drive out. They take your license and everything until you turn around and come back through the gate. 
So I had to wait on them to send the money to the cars. They did. Finally got the truck out of there. And then I went after another truck. Where was that? That was somewhere in Florida, too. And it wasn't near as bad. But, like, when they sent me on that last run, uh, Waco to uh, Atlanta, Caterpillar parts, like, the only way, they, they told me go to the back. And I said, I'm not blindsiding, y'all. Like, I can't. And I tried, and I tried. And there's stuff everywhere in this yard, right? They got parts everywhere and little trains going around. Like, literally, I could not get the trailer in there because of all the crap in the way. There was no room for my front end to come around. I could have got it on the dock without hitting anything. But I could not hit the parts and the stacks of pallets and stuff, you know? All right. So I just got so aggravated. I drove it to the middle of the lot. The other trailer dropped drop yard dropped it and drove out and the security guard home what happened what happened i said damn this place (laughs) i've never been so frustrated in my life so uh so much for uh crst man and uh and 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 all that shenanigans well amber thank you yeah i thought i thought it was gonna be a a terrible go but when i got with us express and i was they took me because i had three months experience even though i didn't graduate but they like they set, took me, you know, put me out there, and I figured out how to back the truck up real quick. So right. <laughs> I didn't right. have no choice. All right, Amber, thank I you very stayed much, ma'am. Years, so thank you. You're so welcome, ma'am. Thank you. I had you. fun. I had a, I, I had a ball with you uh, this this evening, man. Thank you very much. I do yeah. hope, um, I do hope everything you know work out with you. If you, again, you know, get it in, will. Get in contact with uh, Miss Jerry. She will be uh, a I very be- a, a very valuable asset to you. So definitely uh, get a hold okay. of her. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Hey, I'm calling back again. Need a little wisdom from someone who understands. Those that suffer always feel forgotten. How can I make sure you feel not? Mm-hmm. Tell me if this music thinks enough. Never want.